Okay, in today's video, we are going to use a problem use. We are going to do a problem using electric potential energy between two parallel plates, and we're going to calculate the strength of the field between the plates, and we're also going to calculate the velocity of a proton as it moves from the positive plate to the negative plate. All right, this is the situation. Now, it's kind of a long read here. We have a proton. It's held at the positive plate like we have right here, by this force. And the plates are 2.5 centimeters apart. And the proton has a certain amount of potential energy. So in this case, you're given the amount of potential energy. You want to know what is the electric field strength, how much force is needed, okay, to hold the proton at that plate. And if the proton is released, what we really want to know is what is the speed just before it strikes the negative plate. Now, this is the set of equations that we talked about in the previous video. Now, we are going to first try to figure out what is the electric field strength. Now, we have been given the amount of potential energy. We know the charge on a proton, and we know how far it's separated from. So we're going to choose these two things, the change in potential energy and the QED. And if we know the, elect the amount of potential energy it has, we know the charge on a proton because we can look that up. We know the distance, and we're going to calculate the electric field. Therefore, the electric field strength is equal to the change in potential energy divided by the charge and the distance between the plates. That means that we're going to take the amount of potential energy, which is 3.75 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. We were given that. We can look up the charge on a proton, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and we can give the distance. Now, the distance has to be in meters. I can't leave it in centimeters because I believe it was given to us in centimeters. But you remember a joule is a newton per coulomb. Excuse me. A joule is a newton per meter. Okay, and we want to be able to cancel those meters because we want our answer to be in newtons per coulomb. So this joule is a newton meter. So the meter from this newton meter is going to cancel with this meter, and then we're going to be left with newtons per coulomb. And that is what the electric field strength has to be measured in newtons per coulomb. In this case, the electric field strength is 937.5 newtons for every charge, excuse me, for every unit of charge or for every coulomb that we put in that electric field. And you should remember that the field between electric plates, between parallel plates, charged parallel plates, is a uniform field. Okay, so that's the first one. Now, the second one is pretty easy too because we want to know the force. Well, the force that we need to hold it here is equal to the electric force. Okay? Is equal to the electric force. So the electric force Okay, we can use, we can get from our definition of the electric field. The electric field is the electric force per coulomb of charge. All right, so we're going to calculate this electric force because we know the field now. We calculated that in the previous video and we know the charge on a proton. So we can calculate the electric force by just multiplying the amount of charge in coulombs times the electric field in newtons per coulomb, and we get that the force on that proton, which is equal to the amount of force we have to apply to hold it in place before we release it, is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, the charge on a proton, times the electric field. And you can see our coulombs are going to cancel. We're left with newtons, and we get that that's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons. Now, the last thing we want to do is we want to calculate if the proton is released, what will its speed be? What will its velocity be just before it strikes that plate? Now, we were told that it has a certain amount of potential energy right here at this plate. When we release it, okay, it's going to lose that potential energy, and that potential energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy. So just like in mechanics, we have conservation of energy. And at the top here, so to speak, that charge has no kinetic energy. When it moves across to the bottom, so to speak, it's going to get to the bottom. It's going to have no distance. 
and it's going to have it's got no height, no distance. It's going to have no potential energy. So the amount of kinetic energy is equal to excuse me the amount of kinetic energy at the bottom is equal to the amount of potential energy at the top. Just like a car or something moving down a hill or it's kind of a typical thing you often see is a roller coaster problem where the roller coaster goes down the hill or when you drop something straight down the potential energy at the top is equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom. That means that one half mv squared which is the equation for kinetic energy equals the amount of potential energy. Now we could write in here mgh but of course we were given the amount of potential energy the object had at the top. So we're going to rearrange this equation. We get the velocity is the square root of 2 times the potential energy divided by the mass. In order to do that, we have to multiply both sides by 2. This cancels. Multiply this by 2. Then we divide by the mass, and we take the square root to get rid of this velocity squared. Now we just plug everything in, and we get that 2 times the potential energy, which we were given at the beginning, divided by the mass of a proton, which you can just look that up, or you should have that on an equation sheet. And you do that, and you take the square root, and you get that the velocity of the proton just before it strikes this plate is 6.7 times 10 to the fourth meters per second. Okay, so that is how you can use those concepts for potential energy to get the field strength and really to get the velocity of a proton or the velocity of a charge as it moves through an electric field, especially an electric field between parallel plates. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, please give me a thumbs up or leave me a nice comment in the comment section below, and we will see you in the next video.